you don't have to live in pain anymore. This is the podcast where you'll learn the stories, tips, and tools to get back to your path to health. I'm Dr. J. Doom. This is Back At It with Dr. Decompression. Hey, this is Dr. Dudum. This is the Back At It podcast with Dr. Dudum. We have a guest today. We're back to clinical. We're with Dr. Cam. Doc, say hi. How's it going, guys? He's back here from San Diego. Man, you were gone for a while. Where were you? Yeah, uh, took a couple weeks off. I don't know how I pulled it off, but I was in Asia. Got Asia. to enjoy trips to Korea and Japan, and it was amazing. I'd highly awesome. recommend it to everybody. Any so decomp in Japan? Uh, not that I'm aware of. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay, not enough presents. We're, we're opening in Japan. Yeah, that's no, uh, the next stop. For sure. Okay. Tokyo. Let's do it. Um, hey, we're going to dive into the podcast. We have a specific topic today, as we always do. Uh, real quick, sorry, Dr. Cam, shout out to the sponsors, Pillowwise USA for their awesome pillows. And then we have PowerPlate. I'm going to mention PowerPlate in our episode today with the condition. Thanks to PowerPlate for their vibration technology. And we'll get into it. So today's podcast clinical is neuropathy. Right, Doc? Yes, sir. Let's jump into it. Let's jump into neuropathy. So what is neuropathy? I'm going to ask you, what's neuropathy? Uh, neuropathy is basically nerve damage to your peripheral nerves. Typically, it most commonly happens in your feet or your hands. And the most common causes of it are typically tied to things like uh, diabetes, or post chemotherapy, or sometimes things that could be happening higher up in your spinal cord. Awesome. You know, I was I wasn't going to mention the post chemo. That's a big one. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, that's a big one. Um, um, you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? Let's have you jump in, man. I want to hear about your case. I'll jump in. Um, I would say you mentioned feet more than hands. I'd say I have. 80% neuropathy cases that are feet, 20% hands. So yeah, I feel like uh, that's that's similar to what I see too. Similar to you. Mm -hmm. um, so we can do hands as well, peripheral neuropathy, the extremities, the hands or the feet. So I'll dive into a, um, a leg or foot feet issue. Patient came in and you can just tell when, when people have neuropathy, you can just tell they don't walk well. They walk kind of wobbly because their feet, think about this, their feet are numb. They don't have sensation. They can't grip as well. So their feet are numb. They don't walk well. They typically don't exercise well. Um, this woman was struggling with walking and she'd been to, I don't know, seven, eight, nine doctors, comes to us, got numbness in her feet, got MRIs of her back, blood work, everything, doesn't know what to do next. And now they want to do some type of exploratory surgery to see if it helps. So her struggles are she can't walk well. She wants to exercise. She can't drive. And for if you have neuropathy and you're listening, you kind of understand that because you, and if you don't have neuropathy, you're like, why is that a big deal? They can't feel the, the brake or the gas pedal to push it and steer i'm sorry or to accelerate or decelerate so it's, it's hazardous to drive with neuropathy she couldn't drive yeah and then obviously sleeping with the burning sensation so throughout our history we'll ask as you mentioned dr cam number one hey have you gotten your blood sugar checked because blood sugar is the number one cause diabetes of, of peripheral neuropathy so we want to make sure have you gotten your blood sugar levels your your a1c levels like are you good from a blood sugar perspective she was. Um, have you had a history of cancer, chemotherapy? No. And then I'm looking straight, as you mentioned, to the spinal cord, and I'm looking at L4, L5, and L5, S1 disc herniations, and also an anterior lathesis or a retro lathesis. Sure. Could sure. Compromise the spinal cord. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So she came in with her. So own so treatment. why 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 the why the L four L five L five S one? Good question. Can you go into a little so, more detail? Yeah, those are the nerves that are going to go into the feet. So if I was looking at L one L two, you know, is it possible that those nerves could be causing inflammation that trickles down into the feet? Like, yeah, that's possible, not likely. 
not as likely. It depends. It have to be a really big um, extrusion or popping through onto the uh, facing this whole spinal cord. Um, but right. L5S1 would trickle the nerves that go into the feet. Yeah. And, that's, and L4. Yeah. yeah. So the wiring goes down there and that's how you can end up with, with that. Yeah. Exactly. Good question. Yeah. Um, she has a anterior lithesis. So the bone is slipped forward and that's causing some stress on the spinal cord or the spinal nerves. And she has two large disc extrusions, right? Where the jellies pop through and that's hovering in the canal space where the nerves exit. Mm -hmm. So, okay, this could be the problem. We do our decompression test. The coolest thing, you got me into this. We have the thermo scan with the photography. So we have a, um, we take pictures. Think of it like a movie when there's like red light, green light, yellow with someone walking and they can test uh, temperature. We do that like you showed me on their feet. So we'll take yeah. an image of their foot, their foot pattern, and we'll see that it's really red here. Red means is good for temperature. And it's really mm -hmm. opaque and yellow and pale towards the tips. I'm getting my colors right, aren't I? As I'm thinking about this. Yeah, so the, the brighter it is, the better. That yeah. means that there's more blood flow. And then the darker it gets, or like the more blue, um, the worse it is. Yes. So yeah, it's so very, it's, it's it's an infrared camera, right? Yes, same one. Yeah, yeah, and pretty cool. It, like like Predator, very cool, and yeah, like Predator. I was thinking of the movie that I could pinpoint it. Yeah, good old Arnold man. Um, so we do the scan. Like her, t the tips of her feet are all pale. Like there's no blood flow. And mm -hmm. then you know, as someone asked, well, how do you know if your program is going to help? The, this is one of the coolest things that we do in the office. I will get her legs and we'll pull and we'll try to open up and decompress and do a mini traction on her L5 or L4. And my assistant, Jen, will take another picture on the infrared camera and we will compare not pulling versus pulling. And we will see the toes brighten up. It's it's. Amazing. amazing stuff can you uh can you describe to me a little bit about what's happening there the or maybe you can explain to the viewers yeah great question the um i just get so excited i'm talking so fast about this stuff <laughs> the infrared camera is really cool man it's cool the anterior lathesis or the bone that slipped forward and then you've got the extruded disc into the canal the canal is blocked so there's no blood flow there's no nerve flow that's going down from the spinal canal where the nerves are down to the legs and to the feet. There's no blood flow down there because the nerves are being suffocated at that area of the spinal cord or the canal. So when we pull, it like opens the floodgates, the nerves start to work and activate, which stimulates blood flow. That's how that works. That's why when we take the camera, literally 10 seconds later, there's blood flow. Nerves are activated. Nerves tell blood what to do and blood vessels, and they flow blood. Right. In addition to that, right, there's uh, all, all the nerves, uh, wherever they're going, the blood flow goes with them, right? So, like, if there's an impingement of your your nerve in your, in your spine, there's likely going to be some impingement of some of the blood flow, too, up there, right? But entrapment as well. So, nerves and blood, yes. Yeah, they're getting suffocated in multiple spots. There's suffocation in there. Yeah, there's just uh, so they're not going to get things like their their oxygen and and whatnot to stay healthy, and then then you see circulation changes like you're talking about, right? And possible tissue changes rapidly. Yeah, yeah. So not only that, the patient that we see it objectively, hey, to the patient, hey, do your feet feel more tingly, more warm? Like, what's the sensation you feel? Like, mm -hmm. the patient started crying. She's like, I, my feet, they, cause they're cold, right? They're cold cause they lack oxygen. So she's like, my yeah, feet are warming up. Go ahead. And that was a, another question I was going to ask. I'm not sure if we covered it, but like, what were all the things that she was experiencing? Like, what did, what was she feeling um, or not feeling? I know you described numbness, but what, what types of pains and sensations can she get or nerve sensations would someone good, with neuropathy expect? Good point. So cold numbness so inability to feel 
tingling and definitely pins and needles. She felt like she had, yeah, like ants or cockroaches on her feet, like that kind of pins and needles sensation. It's probably something you've heard in the office many times. Yeah, yep, that and uh, sometimes they'll hear burning too. Burning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Burning, probably, yeah. So she, we do these testing. I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm pretty confident that I can help you. And obviously we want to be clear about, hey, helping you. I'm not trying to reverse your condition. I'm trying to get you to drive again. I want you to try to drive, walk, hike. That's our goal. Because she can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we set up on a, on a treatment plan. What does that include? We're going to do decompression. So we're going to angle and pull and oscillate to create space for the discs, the extruded discs to reabsorb a little bit, come back in, allow the nerve flow, as you indicated, nerves and blood flow together. So allow nerve flow and blood flow and just get oxygen down to her feet. That's, that's one thing. We do the uh, Normatec from Hyperice, the compression pants that squeeze and get blood flowing back up. So venous pooling, get blood from her extremities, from her feet up to her heart, get blood flowing. We got her on uh, the nerve spa, right? So the nerve spa is a bucket. It's amazing. You put water in it. You put some Epsom salt. You put some minerals and you put some um, electrical wiring in there. It's protected. Don't worry. And it's conductivity. It helps stimulate. I'm using my hands now. Sorry for the um, the listeners that can't see it. It helps stimulate the nerves and conductivity of the nerves to start generating and regenerating faster. So you can feel mm-hmm. you can feel it. The coolest part is someone turns the the nerve spot up in the beginning of treatment. They turn up really high. You do this at home for thirty minutes, and I'm sure this happened to you. They turn on. They're like, I turned it on, but I, it doesn't work. I don't feel anything. I said, I know it's because. Uh-huh. It's because there's no blood supply. Your your feet are numb. Give it a few weeks. Let's do the treatment. You'll start noticing it. And the patient came back literally 10 days later. She's like, you know what? I was at 40, which is very high. She's like, I turned up to 20. It's like, oh my gosh, my feet, I can feel them. It was really cool. And that's just a good sign. That yeah. It, has that happened to one of your patients? Uh, it's pretty cool. And you finally, when they start to get sensation back, just like you're describing, like in the beginning, They'll be doing the stim unit and or the nerve spa and they'll be like, I don't feel anything. And they have to crank it way up. And then at some point down the line, like you're saying, like a week, two weeks, all of a sudden the magic happens. The magic happens. Yeah. And they it's start pretty, feeling it. pretty amazing. It's very What's cool. That? It's very yeah. cool. Amazing. Um, so how long have you been working with the patient? I had her on a 10 week treatment plan. We just wrapped up for 10 weeks. That's amazing. Is there and a specific reason why you choose 10 weeks? I think six weeks is too short to see some changes. And I think doing a program for like three to four months, we should see some changes in 10 weeks. 10 weeks is we're not going to fix the problem or get where we want to be in 10 weeks, but 10 weeks gives me enough runway to, Hey, we're making a lot of traction. Like we are on the right track. You're going to need more work after 10 weeks, but less dependent on me in the clinic and more dependent on you with at-home stuff and diet, lifestyle changes, exercise changes, those types of things. That's what I've noticed too. Yeah, because the, these these things, uh, maybe like with, with neuropathy, are they, are they slow growing or gradually, you know, getting worse over time or are they something that happened, you know, abruptly and quick? Yeah, totally different than a um, a lumbar pain or sciatica from a just a herniation or extrusion. It's a slow degeneration of the nerves and the blood vessels over time. Right. So it takes a longer but there time. There can to be instances change. where it could be quick onset, like you're describing. Maybe they do have some trauma in their back and it's like pushing, just happens to be pushing on the wrong nerves, right? Um, it could be. I don't find that as much. I mean, it, it's very possible. Yeah, it's not as often. Though. Not as often, yeah. no. It's more of a lifestyle um, and a slower growing trend than a, ow, I have a herniated disc. If they're having a herniated disc, it's going to be probably more in the butt, down the leg, in the calf, where for me, what I'm seeing in the clinic is the neuropathy is going to be, it could be one foot, but it's typically both. And it's, you're getting more of the sensations in just the foot. It can creep up. 
What do you see other, do you get other findings in the spine when you're, or like, do you see other consistent findings in the spine when you have those cases pop up? The neuropathy? That aren't, yeah, that aren't like a diabetic neuropathy. They're more related to the spine. It's, it's going to be for sure 90% a dysfunction of the L405, L5S1. And that'll be like an anterior or spondy, something where the, the bones don't stack properly. One's a retro or one's anterior, something like that. Okay, we'll so there's really show that actual movement of the bone. The alignment is act legitimately visibly off. You will get it exactly. It's not just a chiropractor saying, "Oh, you're you're out of alignment. You're you need a little adjustment." Yeah, it's literally the report shows that there's a structure that's not in the right position. Like it'll be on the medical radiology report. Yeah, yeah. Will there ever be arthritis with these or degeneration? There will be because they're typically older in age. So yeah. whether it's relevant or not, I mean, there's going to be some form of arthritis. I don't know if the arthritis is, you know, the arthritis just shows that that misalignment or that actual structure issue has been there for a long time and causing an yeah. inflammatory response that limits motion that eventually will degrade the nerves. Yeah, I feel like I see that uh, often when i'm working with these cases too because like you said there's some form of antero or retrolisthesis right you see that too actually... yeah same yeah. thing um and then you know there'll be some arthritis or degeneration that's happened um as a result because your your body's smart it's trying to lay down new cement to try to stabilize the area but you know it's the best solution it has on its own and that's its mechanism Right. Yeah. So it tries to protect you however it can. So um, I'll wrap this up. Then I want to hear, I know we've been talking about this case for a while, then I want to hear about yours. Um, so it's 10 weeks later. We just did our reeval. She's 70% better. It's crazy. That's After three that's... weeks, I'll go through all of her transformations. In three weeks, because she would always come with her husband because her husband drove her. She came like an hour and a half away. And we get people mm -hmm. from all over Northern California for this program. She, her husband would come with her and she came one day and like, where's your, where's your husband? Is he here? Oh no, he's at home. How did you, uh, how'd you get here? Well, I drove. Yikes. Whoa. Sorry, let's pause it. I guess it's working. Yeah, I don't know if it's working. It's working. You know? Um, that was really cool. She's like, she can, she can feel the pedal now. So she's driving. That was after three weeks, which was really cool to see. Think about the woman hasn't driven in two years because of her neuropathy. And in three weeks into our program, she's driving. Really cool. So 10 weeks now, I'm wrapping this case up. 10 weeks, she's 70% better. She's obviously driving, she's walking, she's hiking. The she's sleeping at night, the pins and needles and the ants, like that's not waking her up in the morning or middle of the night. She's doing way better. Her only thing is we got to get her running again because running, she wants to feel the, the force is heavier. So it's harder for her to run. That's the last thing I gave her a follow-up plan. And um, we're going to check back in in a month to see how she's doing, but amazing results um, with a neuropathy program for her. Hey, so if you like this content and you want to learn more about spinal issues and neuropathy and disc herniations, et cetera, and you're looking for relief, hit the subscribe button and DM me if you're looking to get past your pain because you deserve to live a life that's better. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's talk about, so I have this 75 year old female, she comes in, actually her daughter brings her in because like you experienced with yours, uh, she wasn't able to drive. So she had numbness throughout her feet. Her feet were always freezing. So that was like her biggest complaint. They were always so cold. She came in in multiple layers, wool socks, uh, leggings underneath that, like the whole thing. And uh, she, like it was impacting her so much because this is a very active lady. She's normally hiking every day. She's going on trips and going on other hikes. Like she loves to move around and see everything that she can. Yep. Um, on top of that, she, she does do some regular like yoga and Pilates. So she had to 
put all that stuff on pause as a result of this thing developing. Uh, similar to yours, no history of chemo, no history of diabetes or any blood sugar issues. She's actually a very thin and healthy looking 75 year old. Uh, I was shocked that she was coming in with anything. Wow. And uh, in ten, and with that, she's coming in. She's kind of like very careful about where she's stepping. She's uh, she's worried about falling because that's actually what ended up happening with her when she tried pushing through this in its early stages. She, oh, had, wow. she had a fall. Yeah. So that's another thing that's like a big deal with these scenarios because these individuals are very, very high fall risk and they tend to be older. And that's one of the uh, riskiest things in terms of mortality, actually, for the elderly. Like for that age group, yeah. Yeah, because uh, the second we stop moving is the second we start, like like our age declines fast, our health does. So anyways, um, she's had to pause everything. This is a super frustrating time for her. She's sad, she's frustrated, she's feeling all these different emotions. She's, you know, she feels bad and guilty because her daughter has to drive her everywhere and she had to come from out of the country to help her with everything. Wow. Um, her husband doesn't understand why she's feeling what she's feeling because he's the type of mentality that, you know, uh, you know, just push through it. Like he's that type of guy. He's like, you know, if you have pain, you just throw it on the back burner and you just keep going forward. He's like, you don't let this stop you from doing things. So he just couldn't really, um, understand what was happening with his wife or why she wasn't able to keep going. Cause they're, they're normally hiking partners and they're, they're very active together. Few questions on her, two things on her symptoms. Like how long could she not hike for? How long could she, was she not able to drive and have her daughter drive for her? And then, oh, and then lastly, a year. a year of no hiking and no driving. A year of no hiking, no driving. She's been very scared to do anything as a result of things she's scared but she's not like she really wants to just go go out and do things like it and the second she gets even like a little hint of feeling slightly better she'll try to go do things and potentially like you know make things worse well, so like she fell right yeah she had that fall and yeah. that was kind of a big deal so yeah very how scary did you stuff. educate her about that problem like how did you because obviously the husband sound like it what maybe wasn't a big deal or just keep going how did you educate them on that because that's a big part too i mean that was that was quite a dance to go through. Like there's, you, you have to feel the room, right? Yeah. Uh, or read the room, right? Um, in the beginning, it was just making sure mom or, you know, mom was on board because uh, her daughter brought her in and her daughter, her daughter was the one that was like pushing to go try these other things. But because um, her mom was, she had already done all these other types of treatments and there's really not a lot out there for treatment, right? Like, as you know, um, when it comes to neuropathy, there's, there's really nothing conventionally that they do other than give you something to help calm the nerves, like the nerve signals, like mm -hmm. gabapentin, right? So they just give you stuff to try to meet, hit the mute button, which doesn't really address the root issue of what's happening. So that was what was offered to her. And then, uh, she's tried all sorts of other types of, you know, alternative healthcare with like acupuncture and chiropractic and massage and. So anyways, um, we had we had to run imaging because my uh, exam findings were showing the same thing that yours were, which was basically like, hey, this is likely coming from your low back, something that's happening in there and isn't just, you know, uh, something that's happening in the nerves down in your feet or the, the blood flow in your feet. Like it's something that's happening higher upstream. So walk, we ran you, MRIs to confirm that. Can you walk me through something real quick? How did you, sure. like, I understand that, but you're saying you did these testings, the test for, to make sure it's coming from the back. Like what would a test like that look like? Cause for the listeners, like there's no way it's coming from my back. So there's, there's orthopedic tests that you can run. There's, they're pretty straightforward. And then we have our own, you know, proprietary tests that you and I okay. run, right? <clears throat> so the orthopedic tests that, that most of us will, will go through and we've learned about is something what's called like a straight let raise where you'll have them lay on their back you'll raise one leg then you'll raise the other and you'll see if that provokes symptoms or recreates their symptoms provokes what their chief complaint is right and in her case it was the numbness tingling burning and that, that super cold sensation in her feet right so very nerve-like sensations in her feet and when we would do that there were certain positions that would make it worse and certain positions that would actually 
like if the, the second we lowered a leg, it would actually improve it a little bit. Okay. Right. Or back to its baseline. So I provoked it. We bring the leg up. That's one, one indication we go, I'm like, okay, well, I want to confirm. And so I do more. There's also camps where I have patient lean side to side, and that'll also cause potential entrapment of those low back nerves. And sure enough, pinch and she feels it in her feet, giving her other sensations, provoking those, those, the neuropathy, right? Yeah. These um, are like standard orthopedic also, tests. We're not making up like fake tests. Yeah. These are yeah. tests that everybody does, you know, whether you're a chiropractor, a, a physical therapist, or a spine surgeon, like these are ortho tests that they all learn and we, we all know how to do. And this is what yeah. they indicate. Right. Um, and then we have our own proprietary tests that we run through, like we're doing like a challenge, a pull challenge, where mm -hmm. we pull on one leg, traction it open, see what creating some space in the low back does to take the load off the nerve and see if that changes the neuropathy. And sure enough, very similar response to yours. And we like to couple that, especially with these types of cases, with the infrared camera that's checking the, the thermal signal, just like you did. Yeah. And same idea. She had basically like no blood flow down there. We do the pull, and then all of a sudden that area starts creating better blood flow, and she can feel some relief. Amazing. So I'm like, okay, these are all really good indications for me that we're going to be able to do something here. I just want to make sure I know what's happening under the hood. So yep. we order an MRI, see what's happening inside there, and it's a very consistent finding like you've been describing. It's that L4, L5, or L5S1. In her case, it was both levels. Both. So she had it. Yeah. So she had an anterior listhesis, uh, or sorry, retrolysthesis at both levels. Mm. And then, uh, yep. So just like that step, right? And she, this was likely the most, uh, this had to be the root of what was happening because all of the exam findings were pointing to it. The MRI was pointing to it. And she would get relief with the things that were designed to target that area 100 so yeah yeah so a very similar treatment plan we wanted to do d or we did decompression with her to try to create space in that area uh to help with the alignment as well because we had to set it at a very specific angle uh i think i consulted with you on this when this was happening and you said go flat um, wow. flat is best for these types of uh, displacements with the bone and that's what we did and that's what gave her relief. We went very slow because she's old and we want to make sure that people have great responses. And then once we created space in there, we coupled that with a nerve spa or the electrical stem to try to feed that nerve, get it stronger, regenerate, because there's no guarantee that once you take the load off the nerve, that that's going to be enough to get it to heal. You have mm -hmm. to also do what you can to try to optimize the nerve function. So giving it electrical stem, these nerves run on electricity, you give it the right type and it can do some really amazing things. Awesome. And like we spoke about, when you stimulate the nerves, you get blood flow with it. And when those nerves become more, more active, there's going to be more blood flow that goes in that area and it's going to warm up the foot and you're going to start feeling things down there again. Right. And then we coupled that with low levels, a low level laser. And we actually had her, use an at-home unit for that as well to try what to home unit are you using uh we used for that for her particular case there's uh some boots that you get from the same company with nerve spa they have these red light boots and she wore those boots she'll wear them every day she in fact loves wearing those things uh, because it was so much more comfortable when she'd have those on with regards to her neuropathy so and it was pretty cool, right? Because over time, these things compound. And she noticed that. And as, you know, flash forward, no more than like six weeks, and wow. she's back out trying to hike again now. And she's Amazing. able to sleep through the night. I think the two biggest things I forgot to mention that she also couldn't sleep through the night. Her sleep was horrible. And now she's sleeping through the night. It's still not perfect, but she's like substantially better. And if you can rest, then you can heal. And so can... she needed all these things coupled together to kind of get her to this point. And her husband's very happy. In fact, he started to come in for treatment too for his neck issues. And uh, yeah, it's been a whole, like a really amazing experience working with them. And yeah, it's, it's pretty profound. If you can figure out where things are coming from, it doesn't take a lot. 
It just takes the right stuff, right? It doesn't have to be complicated. You just need the right recipe. You got to figure out the cause, root cause. I know everyone says it, but like you literally have to figure out what the issue is you're trying to fix. Yeah, don't just chuck stuff at the wall. It's and and hope that you know giving a uh, an antagonist medication is going to do anything. Like you need to actually address these things. These people are suffering, and they can really gain quite a bit of their life back if you just take the time and and thought to piece together a plan that can really get them back on track. You know, absolutely. Are, yeah. Well, and you so, have to see it, right? So you have to see enough of these cases like you're doing with neuropathy um, or like I'm doing to know what to look for. That's the problem. You don't even know what to, some doctors don't know what to look for. I think, um, I mean, most, most, like, I don't know what your experience is. Like, what, what have you heard from the, like, in terms of conventional medicine uh, with neuropathy with regards to it, like prognosis wise, what are they, what are the doctors telling people? Um just from what I'm hearing from patients, they're just taking like Lyrica or Gabapentin or something that's going to modify the symptoms. It's symptom-based modification. Right. And it's just like a Band-Aid, right? Band -Aid. So, um, and they're, and they're not, they're, they're basically being told they have to live with it. It's not a, Hey, let's try to make this better and regress it and fix it, or at least make it better. It's a, Hey, let's, it's going to progress. Let's just try to slow it down and see if you can. And this isn't necessarily, here. this isn't necessarily me, but like bad trying to bash on the profession or anything. No. I, I think that they're just not aware that there are things that exist that can mm -hmm. actually help this from a more alternative stance, a little less invasive, a little less, you know, medicated. So, um, yeah. and, and it just so happens that these things tend to, to dig at the root of things, which is good. So. And this is what we're hearing from patients, right? This isn't us talking with doctors. As they said, we're not bashing. Yeah. This is what we hear. This is the options they're given. And we're trying to provide other options. Yeah, this is the reality. But um, yeah, good good options do exist. And you don't have to live with neuropathy. So that's, that's the, the good news. Yeah, for real. Hey, um, speaking of that, I was thinking of some lifestyle things that we talked to patients about that affect, I forgot to mention it, but um, I know that we've talked about lifestyle things. And you mentioned about herbs and supplements that help with inflammation and pain that you are working on. Um, yeah, well, those I've got, got my list, but I'm curious. You know, I was actually curious about what you, <laughs> you use yourself. I use um, same company as Nerve Spa. I use their Nerve Rebuilder. So the main thing that we're trying to accomplish, both of us, is stimulating blood flow. So right. what things stimulate blood flow? So L-arginine is an amino acid. It converts to nitric oxide. It helps stimulate blood flow. So that's an amino acid that's in our recipe that we use from a supplement perspective. Um, beets do really well, like beet extract or beet powders for a same, same um, element. You want to take anti-inflammatories. Think of it as um, turmeric, ALA, fish oil, anything that's going to help decrease inflammation. And then B vitamins. B vitamins help stimulate nerve growth and for nerves. So we have three products that we use. Two are pills or capsules. And one is a cream that you actually rub on and absorbs into the feet. Works amazing at night to help people sleep. So it just accelerates the, the healing and blood flow so they can get results faster. How does that resonate yeah, with you? Yeah, no. yeah. Uh, overlapping stuff. I think we, we, we use a slightly different nitric oxide stimulant. Or like a supplement, mm -hmm. but that's about it. We're using very similar like anti-inflammatories like omegas and and ALA, and then uh, beet juice is great for blood flow, like you're saying. And uh, I think we just use a slightly different cream too. We we use one that's anti-inflammatory, so okay, uh, that's a glutathione base, and that's about the only difference. But the underlying themes, like you're talking about with these supplements, when you're trying to aid in repair with this stuff you have to put out the fire so mm -hmm. that you can actually repair right and then you have to also create better blood flow to the region because then you're getting the building blocks there to repair right absolutely yeah any things that you tell the patients to avoid at home someone's at home like if someone's starting your program do you tell them hey 
you're dealing with neuropathy. We're trying to increase blood flow. Not only take the supplements that will help, but stop doing this if you want to get better faster. Well, I think it's going to be context dependent, you know, based on what the patient, like what's causing the neuropathy in this mm -hmm. case. So if it's in, in our case, it's, it's, uh, it's something that's happening in the low back, right? There's a spondylolisthesis of some sort mm -hmm. that's triggering it. So I always tell them to avoid the movements that provoke it in general or any activities that do, or try to modify the way that you're doing those activities to see if you can keep from provoking them. Typically things like sitting or uh, laying on their stomach or, uh, you know, leaning forward too much, those kinds of things can provoke things. And, and a lot of these cases where they have that kind of misalignment, historically, at some point, they're going to need some sort of core stability work. So wherever they're doing uh, these activities, I, I always tell them to be mindful of their core. And then if they don't know, have a good awareness of that stuff, we try to help them build that down the road. Or we get them to a PT that's going to walk them through that stuff okay. eventually when they're in a better place for it, right? Exactly. Um, but yeah, usually any activities that, that's going to provoke the uh, the low back and and trigger the neuropathy more, right? Yeah, makes all the sense in the world. Yeah, but if it was something like a polyneuropathy from a you know a diabetes, then um, that's what would need to, they need to be mindful of their their blood sugar, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and historically, anybody that's dealing with any type of nerve dysfunction, I always tend to uh, put them on cleaner diets, regardless. Like what? Because type you of don't want to add fuel to a fire that's already burning. Like even if it's from a different route. Yeah. Cause. Make sense? Yeah. It's just it's it's just yeah. not it's compounding the problem, even though it's not the actual cause of the problem. Yeah. If yeah. you're if you're motivated and you want to get better then you should be putting good fuel into your system so that you can get to where you want. So yeah, it's, it's worth putting in that effort if you're going to be trying to, you know, invest in your health. If you're investing in your health, do everything you can along with that to get the results. Yep. Yeah. Cool, man. I think that's the pod, man. It's a great pod. We it's good to be back. About neuropathy. Um, I know we had, we had some technical difficulties. We got some neuropathy at the end. There's a little track, but we make changes. It. We pivot, man. We, we, we pivoted. We make it happen. Um, <laughs> hey, if uh, people remind everyone, if they're in the San Diego area, how can they find you? What do they do to find you? So we're, we're located in Sorrento Valley, right next to Qualcomm. And uh, you can find us at SD, as in San Diego, chironeuro.com. So that's the best place to check in there. Um, otherwise, you can always text the number 619-344-0111. And uh, we'll get you connected or coordinated to see if we can do anything for you. Reach out, anything nerves, back, neuropathy, discs. Talk to Dr. Tam. Thanks for coming on um, this episode. Again, sponsors, thank you to PillowWise and PowerPlate. And um, hey. This is Back At It with Dr. Decompression. Don't forget to download and subscribe. Thanks. Thanks.